questions, if you could just raise your hands and somebody will bring a mic uh, to you. If you can possibly identify yourself as well and if you're affiliated to an institution, identify the institution and also indicate if you want to direct your question at a particular speaker. Hey, my name's Dan Solomon. I'm not affiliated with anybody. Um, I, I guess my, my question is, you touched on Israel a little bit in some of your comments. It's not, this question is not for anyone in particular. Uh, but will Am Americans' uncritical support of Israel, which I expect to continue, will this be a problem for relations with the Muslim community, or is it something that we can just agree to disagree on uh, going forward? Thank you. Okay. Uh, Dr. Muqtada, do you want to take that? The, the problem with that statement is that it's, it's not a question of we agree to disagree if America had an opinion on Israel. America does not have an opinion on Israel. America is an active supporter of Israel, financing it with billions of dollars. We are going to see this as Americans. We are going to witness at this embarrassing moment in the next couple of weeks where perhaps America might be the only country obstructing the nationhood of Palestinians. It's quite possible there might be only two votes against it in the General Assembly, Israel and the United States. So this is not an, about agreement. There is an active element of US foreign policy which are problematic. And not only is this policy problematic for US Muslim relations, it, it actually contributes to the long-term security of Israel and also the long-term interests of the United States in the Muslim world. We cannot disassociate the enormous cost of the failure of U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East to directly to U.S. policies in the Israel. The cost is unbelievable. And you know what? If you listen to Herman Cain, who in the last debate, I mean, Republican debates are becoming a torture, really. But still, if you listen to his debate, he says, we have to support Israel at any cost. That was very interesting to me, because even diehard supporters of Israel are realizing that the cost is tremendous. And I think that is an issue. What, what Americans need to do is to stop demonizing those who support the Palestinian cause and understand that not everybody who wants a Palestinian state is out to destroy Israel. And if you look at the recent polls, both Gallup, particularly the Gallup poll, you will find that majority of American Jews and majority of American Muslims have nearly identical positions on the two-state theory. So in that sense, that it is quite possible that minorities in power are not even representing what is a majority public opinion, at least within the American Jewish and the American Muslim community. Thanks so much. Can we have one more question? The gentleman in the bow tie there. This is to Professor Jeffrey. Um, basically, I'm sorry, your name? My name is Amjad Dajani. I'm from King's College, London. Uh, basically, uh, what we have seen in the Middle East taking place is that the last remnants of Soviet and socialist influence being removed. If you notice, uh, there is um, a relationship where the revolutions are erupting. You have in Libya, they came to power through Soviet backing. They were supporters of the Soviet Union. Uh, Egypt, Egypt with Abdel Nasser, Arabism, which is Arab socialism. You have same thing with the Ba'athists in Syria, in uh, Yemen, so on and so forth. So what we are seeing is a rejection of uh, the last uh, Soviet influence in the Middle East. Do you think, uh, therefore, we should not consider the monarchy who maintained a Arab nationalists, not Arab socialists. They are different. Do you think those revolutions are going to infiltrate into the monarchies who are nationalist, like in Jordan, where we are seeing some demonstrations who are not asking to change the regime. They are asking to reform the regime, right? And Saudi Arabia and the other monarchies in the Middle East. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rajani. I, I think that it's pretty clear that the socialist model, uh, particularly when it was imposed with a turning of the screws on people's thumbs in their repressive societies, 
has lost its allure and its persuasiveness with publics, not just in the Arab world, but, uh, but worldwide. Uh, the Arab monarchies that remain, with two exceptions, tend to have the advantage of enormous resources to be able to plow back to buy off public discontent. And I think that uh, John Rose's presentation underscored how it is a, a lethal brew or combustible mix of factors, of economic factors that help form uh, the, uh, the explosives uh, if the right match is struck. And in most of the Gulf states and Saudi Arabia itself, you don't have quite that kind of public dissatisfaction. People have something to lose if they demand their rights that they didn't have in most of the other parts of the Arab world where we've seen the explosions. Uh, I think that Jordan is a case where uh, uh, you have enough of a, a kind of loyalty to uh, the traditional order and the, the dynasty among some of the East Bankers uh, that the regime has some reasonable hope of being able to perpetuate itself with an adroit uh, uh, set of reforms just ahead of the mob as it were, and uh, Morocco has already undertaken sudden political liberalization. They've been halfway in the works anyway. Uh, so because those hadn't done the kind of most repressive kind of, uh, of, um, of heavy-handed state, although they had their muhabarats, but it, it was not quite as tough as the others, that little bit of extra kind of space from the pressure cooker, I think can allow them to survive if they stay on the road to moderation. Uh, politically. Unfortunately, we now have to end this session as we're running over time. But uh, before I finish, I would like everyone to thank our speakers. We give a fantastic overview. <laughs> and and uh, I, I'm sure they're, go they're going to be around for the, for the rest of the day, so you'll have an opportunity to meet with them and, and speak with them and discuss some of these issues.